got a message today that I think is, is real pertinent to what's going on right now. Things that, like Rod said this morning, and things that, that Pastor Tommy just said uh, about rejoicing and, and during various times and troubles and tribulations, things that happen. But I'm going to be really blunt, um, super blunt. Um, I usually am, right? <laughs> usually, pretty much. Right, Sheila? Yeah. Right. Right, Sheila? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Here's the thing. So, one of the things that's a challenge as a pastor and just trying to lead a church is when you come across people that may walk in and um, there's, there's troubles and things and there's challenges in life and, and they share and you start to get to know them and understand them. And, and you feed them, as the Lord says, feed my sheep. And you feed them and, and you give the word of God and you develop relationship. And one of the frustrating things is when they are unhappy and they just can't find joy. And you feed and you nurture and you develop relationship and you do things and these people, thank God very few, but they're there. They're just so weighted down, they can't drop the weights off. They just, they can't. They, they're, they've gone through relatively, absolutely some tough times and, you know, they have a, a issues that, that I understand, we understand. But to see somebody give up and like Tommy had just said, take off that parachute. That kind of hit me. Um, and it's like you look at them and you say, if, if, if we could just see that you could rejoice and get past this unhappiness. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17 says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. And this started me on a, a journey this last week. The other night at men's Bible study, um, we were going through the book of Acts. And it's every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m., right here at Rock of Life in the back room. Men be there, same time, you know, same bat time, same God channel. Um, plug, plug. But the men are, are really going through the book of Acts in, in a deep way where we're starting to understand, as men, when we go through things, the type of attitude that God wants us to have, what the priority is in our lives. So I'm, I'm just going to start reading the, the book of Acts right now. It's uh, chapter 5, verse 12. I'm just going to keep reading. Uh, if you can follow along in your, uh, your Bible, your iPad, or phone. Um, the apostles led by Peter were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And as a result of the apostles' work, uh, sick people were being brought into the, uh, the streets on beds and mats so that even Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. This is 17. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people the message of life. I'm going to go to 21. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. Go to chapter 20, or verse 26. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Then they brought the apostles before the high council, where the priests confronted them. We gave you strict orders never to teach in this man's name. The man's name? Jesus. And he said, instead, you have filled all of Jerusalem with your teaching about him. And you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. How bold is that? How cool is that? Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so that the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. Now when they heard this, the high council was furious. And decided, they decided to kill them. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, 
who was also an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside the council chamber for a while. He wanted to say something, they didn't want to hear. Then he said to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care of what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago, there was this fellow, Theodos, who pretended to be someone great. And about 400 other people joined him. But he was killed. And all the followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He got people to follow him, but he was killed too. And all of his followers were scattered. So my advice is, leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it's from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. The others accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and had them beaten and flogged. Then they, were ordered them, then they ordered them never to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. And what did the apostles do right after they, told, they were told, okay, we don't want you doing this anymore, and we're going to let you go, but before, before you go, they took out whips and they flogged them, they beat them. And then they showed them the door and let them go. What did they do? The apostles left the high council rejoicing. 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 That God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. And we went over that. And men being men, you know, we... we, we we read this and said, before being let go, they were beaten. You know, did they fight back? No. Did they say, oh, the injustice. You said you were going to let us go, and now you beat us? I'm calling my lawyer or something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they were shown the door, but basically saying, we're going to let you go, but you know, take this before you leave. They had lots of reasons to be unhappy. It wasn't a happy moment. But it wasn't about being happy or unhappy. It was about rejoicing. Rejoicing because they thought, they thought that here, here we are preaching the word of God and they persecute us. What, 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 what better thing could we be doing to preach the name of Jesus, to tell them the gospel? They were rejoicing for the honor of being persecuted for the sake of the Lord. That, that is called Integrity. Christian integrity. Right there. So here's the thing. I know there's a lot going on. I, I know there's victories, and there's happy moments, and there's tough moments, and there's moments where we're, we're, we're happy about things that are going on, and then moments where we're unhappy. And I know we don't know everything, and I know we're trying to learn, and we're trying to get as much as we can. We're trying to get past our past quickly. We know that there's pressures and trials, and I'm going to be really blunt. I get weary, weary of pastors that are in positions that they don't understand that they need to equip the people. They need to prepare them, like the parachute. Here, here's the Word of God. This is, this is going to save your life. This is going to change your life. The things that are great about you, God's going to amplify, and the things that are bringing you down and hurting you, God's going to delete them. You're going to get to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and the only thing that's going to be the most important thing to you is your relationship with Him. And His Word is going to equip you for these moments when you're going to be challenged and persecuted for His namesake. And the Word is going to give you direction, and the Holy Spirit is going to be there to lead you and guide you to get you past the tough times and the trials that even by no fault of our own, it just happens. I get tired when when pastors don't equip their people with the Word of God and their relationship with Jesus to be able to overcome, to not walk in defeat. One of the worst things can happen is to be 
uh, developing our relationship with Christ and, and to be told that every day is just going to be wonderful and perfect and don't worry, it's going to be great. Just look in the mirror and say, it's just going to be my best day today. It's not equipping you for the trials and the tribulations because when you're fully equipped with the Word of God and you know we're victorious and we know that God's going to be with, be with us, He'll never leave us, He'll never forsake us, that no matter what comes upon my way, that nothing is going to stand against me and my God. With God, I have victory. Without Him, I will have defeat. We are victorious. We're free. And that's the perception. That's the understanding. That's the faith that Peter and the other apostles had. They were arrested for preaching the gospel, told not to do it, scolded, beaten before they were let go, and they walked out rejoicing. See, I've struggled with this past year and a half or so. It's, it's been difficult to wake up every day and say, God, I'm going to rejoice. No matter what happens, it's, it's you and me, God, you and me. But I say that. See, we need to know that God is showing us that there are people in this kingdom that rock, walk around as if they're defeated. We're not defeated. We're victorious. Just because we have trials and tribulations doesn't mean that we are unhappy and down and beaten. We focus on the tough times, the hard situations, the struggles, the disappointments of life as if we've been taken captive, lied about, beaten, flogged, and shown the door. And then we walk out of the door and that's tough. Wow, I just want to go home and just sit on the couch and vegetate because I'm just, I'm so beaten and broken. Can we walk out of the door, not just of, 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 I'm not talking about the church, but walk out of the door of whatever situation we're at and walk out and say, God, you are an amazing God. Thank you for equipping me. Thank you for giving me the, the frame of mind and the spirit that just gives you glory in all things. In all things, I will give you thanks. Understand, God has clearly, clearly stated that there are going to be trials and tribulations. Now, are we going to focus on that? No, because God says to focus, like Rod even mentioned, focus on the good things, the things that are true and noble, of good report. Meditate on these things. And then God equips us to overcome all these other things that are the trials and the tribulations. But the question is, what is our response to the trials and the times that we feel beaten and shown the door? Have we allowed the rejoicing, the joy of the Lord to be stolen from us or have we just given it away? One of the most encouraging verses that we can focus on during these challenging times is Philippians. So let me, let me read this to you. Paul is giving the words of encouragement to the people after some trying times. It's Philippians 4. Always be full of joy in the Lord. And I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone, God bless you, see that there are considerable, there are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you learned from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, listen to this part really carefully, but I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. What was Paul's present difficulty? Does anybody know? He's in prison. He's in prison, and he's still encouraging people with the peace of God to still rejoice in all situations. He's sitting in prison, and he's encouraging other people 
hey, it's going to be okay. I know you're going through things. But here's what you focus on. Don't focus on the stuff that, that you seem like you're, you're getting beat up upon. Focus on the things of God. Learn, grow in wisdom, and the peace of God will be with you. And he's saying this from prison. He's saying to them, rejoice. At the same time, he's letting them know, you don't have to be happy about this, but you should be rejoicing. There is a command from God's word that rejoice always. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5.16. I'm going to go to the meeting. I want to understand the context on this. Paul was, to, um, was lifting up and exhorting the believers in Thessalonica, trying to comfort them and tell them that no matter what, when you put your faith in Christ, you're going to make it. You'll be okay. That we should live for Christ. That no matter what you're going through in any circumstance, our joy should never waver. And that's what we talked about in Bible study even on Thursday night. The difference, plug, plug, the difference between <laughs> happiness and joy. See, happiness is circumstantial. It's just, it's based on these moments. Um, they're temporary, fleeting. Happiness, unhappiness. You could be happy one moment, unhappy one moment, happy the next. You know, you could just be watching a game and happy that your team won. And then the next game, you're unhappy that they lost. Happy that you got a good report from uh, school or something, and then maybe you didn't, and now I'm unhappy. But joy, joy, that's everlasting. That comes from God. It's that joy of the Lord that becomes our strength through all these tough times, these moments. See, the question now becomes, can we keep that joy even when we're beaten? Can we look at our life and maybe loved ones are, are struggling or maybe we're struggling or whatever the situation may be. It, it could be something that is it's life-changing moment like even with what happened with Tara or uh, uh, just, just a job or a situation or something you're struggling with. Can you be unhappy about it but have joy at the same time? Absolutely. I'm not happy about certain things that are going on, but I'm so joyously happy that in the sense of I can have this joy because I know who my God is. I know who my Savior is. I know the strength I get from reading His Word. I know that when things happen, my wife and I always seem to find a way to come down on the same foundation and say, let's just pray. Let's just give God glory. Let's just keep pressing forward even during the tough times. Let's just press forward. We can keep that joy See, we can be like Peter and those other apostles who were beaten for Christ's name. See, Jesus modeled for us and his suffering and his resurrection, and he set it up for all of us believers to have that eternal future with him. We can count it all joy even though we're going through various trials and tribulations. We can rejoice always knowing that we have our hope of salvation, that God's truth will prevail. There's work to do. We have to get up every morning and, and attack the day with our Lord and our Savior and overcome our temptations and our fears. There's work to do. But if God's with us, who can stand against us?